Hello, and welcome back for the ArtCamp 3 Week 10 critique. Uh, so this is the first of our finished painting critiques. Uh, these are always a little bit fun and nerve wracking for everyone except for me. Um, this is kind of a scary, daunting thing uh, for a lot of people actually trying to finish these paintings. Um, it's pretty normal for everyone to feel that way. So don't feel too scared if you do feel like that. Um, it's extremely normal. Um, and that's kind of why we devote 25% uh, of this course to just finishing. Uh, finishing is really, really important. And there is a lot to think about as you do that. And uh, a lot you're going to realize uh, that you still need to work on um, thanks to finishing pieces. So as much as I like doing sketches, uh, I like doing them probably more than most people, uh, there is a essential value to finishing some stuff. And um, that's why I make you guys do that. Um, so I'm probably going to keep repeating things you've heard this entire class. Uh, I'm going to tell you that your values are not very good. And I'm going to tell you that your perspective is not very good either. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and expect that. Uh, so go ahead and plan on hearing that one. Uh, as you finish paintings, just remind yourself of those things. Uh, remind yourself that, yes, I'm probably going to do that uh, no matter what. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just going to dive right in here. Uh, my computer's been having some problems today, so hopefully it's um, sorted itself out. But uh, let's see what we can do. Um, let's see here. There we go. And uh, if you do have any questions, uh, I'll do my best to follow the chat and uh, try to answer anything that might come up. Um, but uh, yeah, let me make sure that I have that up. Cool. So uh, this looks good. Um, this is very promising. Um, very promising start. Um, I think it's got a little ways to go before I would consider it finished. Um, but I think I'm probably going to say that to most people, that most people are going to need um, to keep working on what they're doing. Uh, it's, it's fairly normal. Um, so first off, I'm super confused by this lightning bolt. I don't know why it's coming inside here. Uh, I feel like it should be tucked back in there behind it. Um, so I don't know what's happening there. <clears throat> well, my uh, computer is super laggy today. Uh, this isn't too bad. Um, so the first thing that's kind of confusing me about this piece, aside from the stray lightning bolt, um, is a little bit of the perspective. Um, when you've got an uh, ocean, you've got a super, super strong horizon line established. Um, and that's, that's good because it does help you define everything else. But I'm not getting a lot of strong indicators of that perspective on a lot of the environment. Um, I see it in a couple places where I think you've tried, uh, like this column over here on the right. Uh, it feels like you've tried to have some lines receding down there. But in general, I'm seeing probably too much of the upper side of a lot of these rocks and not enough indication that uh, they, are, um, they are above us. They are above the horizon line here. Um, so I feel like there needs to be a little bit more of that. Uh, the other thing that's kind of confusing me is this area on the left. I can't tell exactly what's happening here. Um, if this is all part of the same foreground, uh, that's fine, but it needs to be a little bit clearer. Uh, now, whether you do that with values, whether you you know keep it as dark as the rest, uh, I'm not sure, but that's something to think about. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that it's a little confusing that there's sort of a background and a foreground and no middle ground. Um, and it is very important to have all three of those. So I'd like to see something kind of here in the mid ground uh, to, to give us a little bit of connection between those two layers. If you have too much of one, um, one and the other, uh, and miss out on something like the mid ground, it's kind of just as bad as missing out on like the entire foreground, like I'll also often tell people, uh, it's important to have all of those things. So I'd kind of like to see some indication of some sort of mid ground here. 
uh, I think that'd be kind of nice to see. Um, I also wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of a payoff over here on the right, because once you get to sort of this part of the painting, uh, there's not really much to look at over here. And I'd like to have something over here. There's, there's stuff to look at over here with the cloud and stuff. There's obviously stuff in the middle. And then it sort of dies off on the right, and you don't have much to look at. Um, so whether you just end up making this kind of column more interesting, uh, render this out, maybe provide some of those little drippy forms that you get in cave formations, uh, something that kind of draws our eye to this side and gives us something to look at. It doesn't have to be super important, uh, because it's probably not going to be your focal point. Uh, but as long as we can look at it and be vaguely entertained, uh, that's about all you need to do with it. Uh, so at least give that some thought. Now your values are pretty good. Uh, I think in general they're working pretty well. Um, I would like to see maybe a little bit more um, concentration of perhaps slightly more light going on here. Um, you know, obviously I, I do like what you're doing with the subtlety of a lot of this, but I feel like you could get away with ever so slightly more um, light coming into this cave. Uh, particularly if you've got that much lightning going on in the background, you sort of have some artistic liberty to illuminate some stuff. Uh, and actually tone down a lot of what you have uh, to sort of conform to that horizon line. Uh, realize that we're going to be looking up at a lot of these and seeing the side of a lot of the forms uh, rather than the top planes. Maybe you could bring some more warmth in, too. As we get below it, um, below the horizon line, make sure we're accentuating the fact that we're looking at these top planes. Right now, you sort of have a, a single plane uh, that's a little bit rounded out. You have this sort of light plane, and it's not me making it really obvious what's the side plane and what's the top plane which is part of the reason you're not getting a strong sense of uh, the perspective as, uh, as it relates to uh, the horizon line there. So try to keep that in mind. Just a little idea there of something you might be able to do. Um, I also wouldn't mind seeing, uh, just for the sake of artistic liberty, uh, actually adding in a little bit more light in here. It's just getting a little too dense. There's a little too much dark. Um, I feel like you could do with just a little bit more contrast in here to make a couple areas pop out. It doesn't have to be a lot, but uh, the, you have to think that on a lot of monitors and stuff, you're not going to be able to identify a lot of the contrast in your shadows. And so it's worth making sure that you've got a little extra value range in there. Um, you've also got a lot more value range based on the figure. The figure's super dark here, and that sort of dark tone doesn't go anywhere else in this image. So you still have uh, actually a fair bit of value range. Um, whether your monitor is showing all those colors or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but if you start looking at the, the color values here uh, over on that wheel, it's kind of eights and nines for his hair, uh, and you're up in 11 and 12s here. Um, as your darkest shadows. So even though it's very subtle, um, it's worth noting that you can do that. And uh, sometimes I'll even get down to like fives and fours uh, for those really, really dark shadows, which gives you that extra value range uh, as you get into those extreme, extreme shadows. Um, the cloud in general, I really like. I think it's super cool. Um, I don't have too much to say to it. Um, I almost wonder if it works better without the lightning bolts. I almost wonder if the in interior illumination is enough to tell us that it's lightning. Uh, I think it might be the case. Um, I also wonder about lightening all of it up just a little bit, just to push it further into the background. Yeah, I think you might be able to get away with that and just have a little bit of a clearer image because of that. reduce that value range back there uh, to push the distance. You're still going to get that sense of light, uh, even if you have a slightly narrower value range. 
you're also going to be able to achieve a stronger sense of scale and distance uh, by pushing it back ever so slightly. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about it on that one. Uh, overall, looking looking really good. All right, this looks good. Yeah, this looks really good. Um, yeah, overall, your value work is looking pretty good. You've got a nice variety of values going on. Um, obviously, you haven't rendered everything, but you know that. Um, so what I'll say is that right now, your perspective isn't as strong as it could be because you've sort of you figured out a way to paint a rock. The thing is, you've done sort of the same rock no matter where it's at. Um, and it's it's fine to use similar shapes and stuff, but you do have to account for the extreme difference in perspective. So even though you're going to have some some forms, uh, some planes that are maybe tilted down towards us, uh, and that's fine, uh, you've also got to still give us that sense of perspective. Because otherwise, by sort of cheating it and having all the planes tilted towards us, it's the same thing as kind of ignoring the perspective. So as you're doing this stuff in the background, um, produce some ones that are really, really in perspective where you're not seeing the top of these uh, planes, where you're really, really showing us the, the sides uh, and the undersides of these forms. And you might sneak just, you know, a little bit where it's wrapping around, but for the most part, you're just showing us the sides uh, and bottoms. I know how easy it is to get into that tendency of sort of painting that top because it looks great when you're doing it in the foreground, um, but that's because we can sort of get away with it there. Uh, it's important to show us kind of the underside and push that sense of perspective as much as possible. Same goes for up here. Like this is fine. This is more or less correct, but I think for the sake of perspective, you're generally going to see more of that other side. So more of um, looking up and not seeing this top plane as much. So it's kind of a case where, yes, even though you could probably get away with that, I think you'll have a better sense of perspective uh, if you push it the other way and have us not see the top of this thing because it's so much uh, further above us. Um, so overall, I think your rendering is quite good. Uh, I think your colors are really good. Your sense of lighting is quite good. Uh, it's still got a long ways to go um, just because uh, of the style of rendering you've set out for yourself. Uh, it's going to take quite a long time to render this. Um, but I think it's headed in generally the right direction. I think your values could be brought together a little bit more in a few places where I think you're getting too contrasty. That could simply be that you just haven't rendered it enough. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, the clouds are quite cool. Um, they're very stylized, and I really like that. Uh, I love this kind of underside you've got going on with the warm colors. Uh, I think those are working great. Uh, do be careful uh, as you're rendering that, I mean, I run into the same problem uh, since I paint on one layer a lot, is making sure that that intersection of your you know, foreground slash uh, ground elements interact well with the background. Uh, I know you haven't gotten to it here, um, but it's something to think about and spend a lot of time working on uh, because it will be an absolute pain to get it to look right. Um, having done it many times, I know that. Uh, so go ahead and make sure you're, uh, you're taking enough time to do that. Um, let's see here. I would also say you could probably, I know what you're trying to do with the corners here, but I would actually say you could probably blow out one of these corners and actually have a little bit more depth in your piece. I don't think you need to fully swoop in there. It's sort of the tendency as we do environments. It's why people do the, you know, the side tree thing is we want to kind of contain everything we're doing, but it's sort of okay if you do let some stuff escape, um, you let it, you know, get out there. So go ahead and think about uh, think about doing that. Uh, you also want to think 
maybe a little bit more about the size of your details and how those are going to work as you do take this to finish. Um, if you set yourself up for this sort of rendering at this distance, uh, you're going to need to really, really render this stuff in the foreground. Um, in general, this stuff in the foreground is going to need to be quite a lot tighter uh, than the stuff back there. Uh, our eyes are going to expect to see more detail closer up to us. Uh, so you're going to need to render even this stuff uh, a lot more than you have. Details are going to need to get smaller. The forms are going to need to get smaller um, and to get tighter and uh, more careful. So think about that. Uh, it's part of the reason sometimes you'll see people paint a little bit looser in the background is they can get away with a little bit looser in the foreground. But uh, with what you've set up here, uh, you're sort of setting yourself up for doing a lot of rendering, which is fine. Uh, it's, a, it's if, if anything, a good thing, but um, something to think about. Uh, you're sort of missing out on some form here. Uh, this is sort of flattening out a little bit. Um, let's say to kind of go back in and draw in with some straight lines, some of these rocks, uh, so that you can kind of figure out what is going on here. Particularly if there's any cases where you can uh, play up the perspective, you know, start thinking about these things as blocks for, again, uh, if only for a little while, uh, just because I think it'll help you um, clarify some of these forms and make them read a little bit better. So just kind of get back to that geometric stage. Uh, it's fine if you have rounded out forms. You just need to feel as solid as if you were doing these blocky forms like this. Uh, your rocks feel pretty good, but your cliffs right now are a little bit, little bit mushy, um, and just kind of flattening out a little bit. Um, yeah, overall, uh, overall it looks really good. Uh, I do love the color palette you've got here, and the sense of lighting is starting to work great. Uh, I would just, uh, just pay attention to those things as you keep going on this one. But uh, I think you've got uh, you've got a good start here, right? Right, this is looking good. Um, this is off to a really really good start. Um, your color work and your value work is is really good. Uh, I think you're you're definitely on the right track. Um, the thing I want to say is that you seem to have a tendency to kind of repeat the same size forms, uh, which leads to kind of a sense of monotony. And this is a very easy habit to fall into. And it's something I'll occasionally notice in myself is that I'll keep breaking up forms and then I'll realize when I zoom out and look at the painting fresh that I've sort of broken up everything into the same size chunks. Uh, like with this cloud here, all of it's sort of the same size uh, bubble form here. Um, all your rocks are sort of the same level of broken up. Um, they've all got sort of the right amount of cracks, uh, which is a similar size distribution, no matter where you go, no matter how, how far in the background you are or how close to the foreground you are, they're all about the same size, uh, which is a very easy trap to get into. Uh, because we want to keep adding detail to things. And so we think by adding detail, we add more uh, more different forms and stuff. And then we end up with something like this. And you actually lose out on some of the possibilities by not having some bigger and smaller forms. But actually, if I just take a couple of the things that you've done that are actually good, uh, I think look nice. I'm not saying that what you're painting is bad. Uh, in fact, it looks quite nice. But by simplifying some of the forms that you've got in here and adding in some larger shapes, uh, it gives more weight to some of the other things that you have done. Uh, when you have broken up some of the other forms into smaller forms, uh, we pay more attention to them and we notice them more. Because now there's starting to get to be a little bit of contrast between things. Um, there's some larger forms, there's some smaller forms. And there's a, there's a difference between those. Uh, it's very easy to get into this um, tendency of, of doing these little tiny forms. Um, and same goes for going the other way of maybe you want a few areas here 
where you get even more nuanced and noodly with your details and have some little broken up stuff and go even smaller with some of your rocks here. Really, you know, push that contrast of scale. Um, <clears throat> same goes for the clouds. Uh, and watch that you're not doing the same size form. Maybe simplify part of this into a large form uh, and then contrast that against some smaller forms. And goes for the sky. Uh, let some of these areas be a little bit bigger. Uh, let some of the forms be larger. Uh, let some of the light areas break through and be a little bit bigger. Add that little bit of variety in there. Uh, we want to see. Um, see here. The other thing I kind of want to say is there's not enough sense of sort of focal points. Like I'm not sure where I want to be looking here. Um, I want something to latch on to because right now it's feeling too much like a background. Uh, and that's that's a pretty common problem. Um, it's it's hard to let an environment stand on its own, uh, especially without putting any figures in there. Uh, but I want to see something to sort of draw our eye, and those can be pretty simple. Um, you know, adding in perhaps some cool lighting effects to this background here. Uh, let us you know draw our eye to this distant uh, mountain. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you want to add your uh, focal points, but it is important to think about those. Uh, you know, maybe you want to add a little cave over here, uh, some sort of mystery to it, something outside the canvas, uh, something outside of exactly what you're showing. So sort of the esoteric not really able to be taught element of finishing paintings is, you know, what is your painting exactly about and what are you trying to tell us with your painting? Uh, it's, it's a tricky thing to get across, um, but it is, it is worth thinking about. I also wonder if you want perhaps some of these clouds even like spilling over on this, because that'll at least give us a sense of motion because right now, the fact that they're right on the lip of this thing and not spilling over makes us wonder if they are or if they're receding from it or what's happening there. But I think by actually having them overlap some of this stuff and actually you know, coming into the scene, uh, we're going to have a better sense of emotion and action and story to this scene. Perspective wise, I'd want to see this raised up a little bit. I feel like perspective's not quite right there. I could be wrong about that, but that's my gut is that it's it's not quite high enough. So yeah, um, just some random thoughts here and there. Um, overall, it's looking really good. Your rendering skills are, are quite good. Uh, you get a little bit weaker on your perspective as you get to your foreground. So make sure you uh, remember that perspective grid. Uh, it's part of the problem of having things the same size is that even as you get to your foreground, the rocks are staying the exact same size, so they're not benefiting from the scale changes that are going to usually happen uh, as we get closer to the camera. The rocks are going to get bigger because they're closer to us, uh, even though, yes, you might have smaller rocks. But it's one of those optical illusions that if you have something distant that's huge and then things as they get closer to us get smaller, but they get larger in our viewpoint, so they stay the same size effectively. It looks kind of weird. Um, so when you do these rocks, 
that are the same size as you go back uh, and don't have a lot of scale change uh, will tend to flatten out some of the um, depth that you might be getting in your piece otherwise. So that's one of those other reasons to, uh, um, to make sure you've got a nice variety of sizes of forms. Um, yeah. So that's about all I have to say on those. Uh, overall, it's looking quite good. Uh, again, I really like your color and value work. Uh, I think your lighting is fairly strong as well. Um, just some things to think about uh, as you're getting into this uh, so you don't get too lost on uh, lost in the rendering. And don't forget these big shapes, this big overall impression of the image. All right. This is looking good. Um, you do have to do a lot of rendering. Um, this does not feel nearly rendered enough for uh, a finished piece. So uh, I don't know why my tablet has decided to die. Here we go. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think you'd want to take this way, way further uh, in terms of rendering. Uh, but assuming you know that, uh, I will say that this is this is, in general, a fantastic start. I think your colors are in the right place. Um, I think the lighting's looking good. Uh, you've definitely taken the things that I mentioned the last time I saw this sketch uh, into account uh, and have come up with a quite nice um, kind of sketch right here. Uh, but now I want to see all of this rendered. Uh, even if it's stylized, uh, just start getting into it and kind of zoom in to, you know, close level and start figuring out exactly what's happening here. Figure out how you want to stylize these trees uh, and paint them. Figure out all those little things uh, and refine them. So right now, I don't have too much to say because as a sketch, this is working pretty well. Um, the only thing I might say is that if you want to work on your perspective perhaps a little bit, because uh, right now, I'm assuming the horizon line is somewhere around here-ish, I think. Uh, and so I might want to see maybe a little bit less uh, of the top of this form here. Uh, it's not quite making sense uh, as it stands. Uh, or I want, um, and or the, I guess, uh, I want this foreground water to come more at us. I want to be looking more straight down into this water. I think we'll help uh, we'll help some of the depth here. The other thing I'm kind of struggling with right now is that this backdrop, um, if you consider this rock here, the midground, this backdrop doesn't feel quite far enough away. And I think some of that's going to be from the scale of your details. Uh, as you start to get in here and add in some smaller forms and smaller details, I think that'll help push it back. I feel like maybe there's also some stuff with the perspective there that you just might want to take a look at. Make sure it's it's all working correctly. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is off to a great start. Uh, I just want to see way, way, way more rendering. Um, but you probably realize that. Um, so yeah. I want to see this piece finished because I think it looks really sweet. Right. So this has some good colors to it. Um, the first thing I want to say is that the perspective is all over the place. And put in your perspective grid no matter what. Because right now, uh, you know, you might be going for a storybook feel to things, and that's fine. Uh, but you still want to make sure that your perspective at least makes a little bit of sense. Because um, right now, you're not getting any sense of this perspective here. Uh, for instance, if you've got a river, uh, especially if it's that far back, you're not going to see the whole river when a hill is covering it or when trees are covering it, thanks to perspective. Uh, rivers are going to get way less visible uh, as you get further away. They're going to narrow out. A uh, whole lot. Furthermore, uh, we've talked a little bit about it before, but the reflectivity of of water 
changes as it gets further away from you. So as it gets closer to us, it's not going to be reflecting the sky uh, like you think it is. It's actually going to be quite a lot darker um, than you think. And that's just going to give us this more naturalistic approach um, to this foreground. Um, no grass brushes. You're not allowed to use grass or leaf brushes. I know occasionally, yes, they can look good, um, but for the time being, find a way to paint them without using those texture brushes. Um, yeah, the other thing I would say is more reference. Um, even if, again, you are going to stylize it, and I'm totally fine with stylized work and cartoony work and storybook work and all that, uh, still reference is important. So like this tree, for instance, is just sort of what you think of a tree rather than an actual tree. So even if you want to stylize it somewhat, uh, find some reference for some actual trees so that um, there's something a bit more interesting and naturalistic uh, about it all. How to actually paint a tree, uh, come up with some good reference of trees, and let us see some of that three dimensional form. You know, if you're going to set your horizon line here, uh, let's see how this, um, how the uh, trunk of the tree wraps around it, how the roots of the tree. Um, we'll have these three-dimensional forms and uh, let's see some more dimensionality to it. Uh, if you are going to have this sort of flat cutout style like this, we'll see a little bit more form in there. Um, colors overall, I think, work pretty nicely. I think it's kind of cool using the pinks and blues and the uh, greens. I think it's a nice color palette. Uh, I just want to see some more of some more of that. I would say to stick a little bit closer to some set reference. I think that'll help a lot, uh, as well as push your uh, push your perspective. Uh, make sure that perspective is really, really strong, uh, because it is absolutely vital, um, especially if you're going to have this much of a sweeping environment uh, where you've got this much uh, range from top to bottom. Uh, you know, if you had naturalistic perspective on this bridge, it would be you'd be looking way down at it by the time you're down here. So think about that and think about um, how things are going to recede. The same goes if if you're looking that far away at things, things are going to flatten out a whole lot back here and get really, really thin and narrow um, to push the depth in this piece. Um, so yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's about it on that one. So yeah. Uh, what's wrong with my microphone? I do not know why it has robot voice, but it is the exact same setup I've had every other time. So hopefully it's fine. Um, there's a chance it's just the stream is screwing up. Um, so this is looking good. Uh, I like the concept in general. Um, it's not obviously finished, uh, which I would like to see a um, more finished piece uh, um, as you uh, as you go into the next few weeks. Because um, I think the concept and composition is working pretty well. But uh, right now, it's not really reading as too much, just because you haven't pushed that rendering stage. Um, um, I do like I do like where it's going though. Now I want to see so much, so much more rendering. Um, so I can't say too much. Uh, I think this is a good sketch, and from here I just want to see, I want to see more. Um, compositionally, uh, I'd say that if you are going to do something like this piece, I would actually take this um, element and separate it from the silhouette of what's behind it. So if you're going to have this kind of city or whatever back here, I would um, encourage letting those silhouettes not quite overlap quite as much. Because just as an abstract piece, uh, it's sort of, it feels too much like the same object. Uh, they're about the same scale. And when there's that much overlapping, 
it's not working quite as well. Let this background uh, read on its own shape. Uh, you might also think about having more of a mid-ground here, uh, tie this stuff together. Uh, it's sort of what I've talked about with other people, but if you have kind of a foreground but no connection to the background, you're missing out on quite a lot of depth that you can have. And, uh, quite as much connection between those two. Yeah, um, looking good for a good start, but uh, I want to see some more finished work uh, for our next critique. All right, this looks good. Um, really nice level of uh, finished rendering here. This is definitely a good level uh, that you want to hit. Um, be careful about your perspective. I know I mentioned it in the uh, chat earlier this week, but I still feel like things are a little bit off. So you're setting up kind of a three-point perspective deal here. So you've got stuff receding up like that, like the tree here. Make sure that... Um, and these towers and this wall are receding correctly. So they're actually going to bend in a little bit. Uh, I believe more than you have. Your tree is kind of working there, but some of the other parts of the, the wall are feeling a little bit wonky. There's a few lines that are kind of going divergent from what I would expect to see, where I would expect to see this kind of tilted in a little bit. Um, typically, when you're doing a three-point uh, perspective, you want that center point uh, where all these vertical lines are receding to, somewhere near the middle, because otherwise you might get sort of the effect that you've got now, where perhaps you're trying to set it somewhere way over to the left, and so everything's kind of receding to the left. and uh, doesn't feel quite right. So I take a, um, I tr try to try to look a little bit closer at that. Um, you could get away with not doing three point because um, I know how much of a pain it's going to be to change all that background. And so I might suggest you um, just instead take out the three point perspective here in the foreground. Um, that, uh, and just kind of have this tree go a little bit more vertical. So tilt this up a little bit uh, and remove that sense of three-point perspective. Uh, the other thing I'd say for your perspective is I want to see a little bit more of the bottom of some of these clouds. Uh, you're doing it in a couple areas, so clearly you know it's, it's right to do. Um, but I want to see some more of that. Uh, I think you're seeing too much of the, the lit side. And I actually think it'll look really cool to have um, more of this underside and uh, even wrapping around to the back. More of those kind of shadow planes there. Kind of lets you also do some fun stuff with the shadows on the clouds. Uh, that can be another fun compositional tool is to have a cast shadow on some of the cloud. Uh, it can look kind of cool and maybe pop out some of the some of the foreground elements. Also adds a little bit of variety when you have too much kind of white going on. Um, I also don't I don't love the shape of your mountains back here. Uh, I feel like there's kind of a flattening out happening here because I think you've in some way added too much detail here that the scale doesn't read. Uh, I almost see perhaps a little bit less detail back here. 
a little bit more concentration on that silhouette. I want the silhouettes a little stronger uh, and easier to easier to read. Uh, also, maybe some cast shadows here um, on the on the clouds uh, as they interact with the mountain. Uh, so make it clear uh, that you know if you're going to have this cloud hanging right on top of it, uh, get some reference for exactly how this works. Um, but you'll actually be able to see the 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 line of cast shadow uh, where it happens. It'll often be a little bit softer, but uh, will still be a definite cast shadow, uh, which is kind of a cool effect to get. But yeah, I think your your background overall here is is a little too too noisy with some of the detail, and I'd like to see it kind of simplified out. Uh, I think the level of detail works works fine here, but I think it's really kind of noisy and lost as you get to this background area. Um, with how rendered your midground is, uh, I want to see the foreground rendered quite a lot more. Uh, your foliage looks pretty sweet. Uh, I think it's working great. But your extreme foreground and your tree here uh, is, is looking a little bit lazy in comparison. I didn't like the warmth that you had in some of the uh, undersides of these, these cloud shadows. Uh, and I'd like to see some of that in this foreground one, too. Kind of nice to see. I don't think the purples are working quite as well as you want them to. So just think about that, too. Also, if you're going to have this bright white of clouds, uh, that does mean that you're having a lot of light hit the hit the ground here, which means that this softness doesn't quite make as much sense without some more intensity. That is to say, I think you're you're actually going to get a little bit more um, casting in a couple areas. You can actually go a bit lighter, uh, increase some of the lights and darks in these areas. Um, just have a few areas where move up the contrast and put in some put in some stronger brush strokes. So that sense of light still feels like it's part of the same world. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't have too much else to say. Overall, I think this does look really good. Um, yeah, I think this is a quite solid piece. Um, a little confused on this area over here on the, uh, the left. Just because, since it's not tied to this, uh, because it, it dips down, I'm not sure how far or near this is. Uh, and it feels a little feels a little awkward that it's in shadow, but is a drastically different value than this, which is also in shadow. So I either want this illuminated and brighter, or tied further with the background here and the midground, uh, or something happening there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what, but right now it feels a little bit a uh, little bit awkward. Um, so yeah, uh, looking good. Um, you're definitely heading in the right direction. Really good. I think you're gonna have a good portfolio piece here. Right. Yeah, this is looking. It's looking good. Um, it's a good improvement from uh, from the stuff I saw before. Um, I like the color palette. Uh, I like a lot of the subtlety happening here. Um, like what you're starting to do with the really subtle values here in the background. I do want to see at this point uh, some more rendering and some more care in places. Um, so for your background, I'd say to get some reference of some more rocks. And using the same value range you've got, but Perhaps just kind of work on tightening up your drawing some. You know, let chisel chisel out some forms of dark and light, and uh, really show us exactly how this form is working. 
show us where the overlaps are happening. Give us that clear sense of light and dark back here. Uh, even if you have to do it really softly and with a really subtle value range, you can do you can do all of that. Um, so a little bit tighter drawing in that area. Uh, same goes for the foreground, where this stuff is all looking pretty good, but I feel like it could use another pass of tightening up. Right now, it has this overall impression of softness, which it would be fine, um, and sometimes softness works. But when you've got minute detail like this intense grass texture here, and then this super, super, super crisp uh, hard-edged foliage and branches, uh, it doesn't feel like the same world. So either there has to be this overall sense of impressionistic softness, uh, or there has to be more of this hardness and really careful thought. Um, just on a technical note, you might want to make sure you're doing this um, on its own layer, because right now the background behind these trees uh, gets a little bit dull because it's a pain to paint back there. Uh, because going back in here and painting in the sky is a royal pain uh, when it's on um, all on the same layer. So perhaps consider chopping that onto its own layer. Uh, you might have an easier time. Also, you know, when you're dealing with silhouettes like this, uh, when you've got more or less the focal point silhouettes, take the time to really get in there and go carefully and really make sure that silhouette is perfect. Because that's going to be the first thing we look at is the silhouette. And if you've got you know stray brush strokes that are kind of going off, there's some inconsistency to it. Um, there's some areas where it's it's hard and soft where it shouldn't necessarily be, where it just kind of feels sloppy more than planned. Um, we're really going to notice that, and it's going to drag down the rest of the piece. So make sure you're going in there and really carefully considering the edges um, where they really really matter. Don't want sloppy edges. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I do really like the colors you're using here. Uh, your color palette is is spot on. Um, same goes for the the water feel to it. Uh, I think it's working great. Uh, I'd like to see maybe maybe a little bit more gradient from dark to light. Uh, where it's going to be darker towards us um, and lighten up as it gets further away from us. It won't be too much, but uh, think about that. wonder if we could maybe push the value range ever so slightly to the water areas where you've got perhaps some reflections some specular highlights happening here. A little subtlety, but maybe maybe just a little bit more value range in there. No, looking good. Right. Uh, yeah, this looks good. Um, let's see here. What am I going to say? Um, First thing I want to say is is perspective mainly. Um, this pool of water does not feel quite right. Um, it kind of depends on where you're setting your perspective line. If you know your horizon line is around here, uh, depending on where your horizon line is will sort of change how this how this recedes. Um, that is to say, if it's up here, uh, then this is um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm explaining myself here. Uh, right now, this, this feels both way too far to be receding, as in I feel like it should stop there, uh, as in the pool of water is just going too far away. Uh, and the same goes, uh, it feels like this is the horizon line, and it should be going that far away, but the environment around it doesn't adhere to that. So given the uh, amount of uh, depth that you've sort of got here, uh, there's a little bit of confusion going on back here. Because right now, this doesn't feel like that great of a distance uh, as far as the cliff goes. Same goes for this foreground. 
Whereas this water feels like it's going back here and then suddenly getting to the distance of what look to be distant mountains. And that's getting a little bit confusing. So I kind of want to see perhaps a sort of wall of something uh, to show us that there is a separation between this foreground area and those background mountains. Because right now those, those are sort of confusing my eye. Uh, the other thing that I think is throwing your perspective off is that all of your brush strokes here in the water are sort of the same size. And this is really common and really easy to do. Uh, because as we're painting, we tend to not get too small of brush strokes nor too large. And we just try to do those water reflections and water ripples and all that fun stuff. Uh, when in fact, we need to simplify and soften some of our brush strokes so that they're not too uh, contrasty. Uh, I think if anything, there's, there's too much contrast in a lot of this water. And these brush strokes are way too obvious. I actually want to darken a lot of what you've got here. So this is a case where I think your values and your drawing were getting a little too muddy and uh, I think you were sort of confusing yourself. And the tendency when you do that is to kind of just keep going, keep plowing ahead, keep keep trying to paint, keep doing the same thing you've been doing. But the thing I'll suggest is you sort of take a step back when you get into those situations and actually almost go back in with line or something that is really simplified, uh, like big value shapes, and just break that stuff down. And okay, we're just going to, we're going to simplify this. We're going to reduce it to its absolute fundamental forms, and absolute fundamental values until we get something that reads clearly again. So rather than trying to paint every ripple, try to almost group the, uh, the reflection and some of the darks and lights in that pool of water into larger shapes that will help to accentuate the perspective there. So as you're dealing with waterfalls, uh, as much as they do tend to flow very smoothly, there's also going to be some overlap there where um, stuff is getting diverted, uh, stuff is sticking out of the water, perhaps. Uh, there's a little bit less um, singular flow to it. Stuff that goes against the forms that you've got, goes against the flow of uh, the directions you're showing. So yeah, I think some of the stuff is just clarifying your perspectives where you've got sort of this just kind of weak values. Um, it's not obvious what's happening there. It's not obviously dark. It's not obviously light. Uh, it's not obviously reflection. I'm not sure where the water starts and stops. I'm not sure where the rocks begin and end. Uh, all that stuff is a little bit ambiguous right now. And so you've got this, this waterfall here. And waterfalls provide, for one thing, a tremendous amount of mist. Um, it's wonderful because the thing that mist tends to do is it will tend to actually outline a lot of what we're doing. It will sort of provide this nice crisp edge uh, around uh, some of our forms uh, that nicely silhouette things. So that's something we want to take advantage of. Uh, if you've set yourself up for having that, uh, you want to make sure you're taking advantage of that as much as possible.
So when you've got water, uh, don't forget that the reflections and foam and stuff like that are going to pick up more light than the rest of the objects. Even though they don't get pure white or anything like that, and they're still in shadow, uh, they can occasionally pick up some, some really bright colors uh, in there. Uh, as they start to foam and realize that that's a reflective form that's kind of curving towards us. So at some point uh, on that curve, odds are they're going to be a pretty bright reflection of the sky itself uh, and is actually going to brighten up quite a lot. So yeah, just a, a bit more clarity, um, a bit more chiseling out these forms. And take a step back uh, as you render and get back to that basic stage of what are the what are the values doing? How can I show this as clearly as possible? It's all about getting back to that first week of doing those three values. You know, what are your three values here, and how can I make each of these forms stand out as much as possible um, with the value and lighting setup that I've that I've described here? Um, your tree looks good, but right now has lost some of its three-dimensional depth. Right now, it's very two-dimensional. Uh, for instance, I don't have any sense of a branch going behind it. Uh, I don't have that sense of you know there being a third dimension here as it goes perhaps away from us or really, really close towards us. Uh, none of these branches feel like they're really, really sticking out towards us. So think about those um, sort of third dimension aspects to it. You sort of got some of it going on here um, with this foreground uh, root, but I almost want to see that played up even more. Feels like you're a little tentative with it, but you could go really, really, you know, easy with it. You get really good with that foreground. Uh, let that thing come straight out the camera. Get a lot of depth in there. Um, last thing I want to say is that I'm not sure on the material that you're doing for the for the sculpture. Uh, you know, if it's rock, I want to see a little bit more rock in there. Uh, if it's if it's something else, I want to see some more indication of how reflective it is. Right now, it just sort of feels like a standard um, kind of matte surface, and I want to see some more uh, indication of of that material and how it how it works. Um, obviously, uh, when you're doing a face, they're super annoying because they have to be perfect. Uh, so do check your perspective there. Um, you've got some forms in here that are sort of off. Draw those, draw those lines, keep them really straight. Make sure all this stuff lines up nicely because uh, there's just a few places where they're ever so slightly off, where the nose is not quite lined up and needs to be cleaned up. Uh, where this further cheek should probably come out a little bit more uh, to line up with what you've got here. So just some little things like that. Um, think about where this corner of the mouth is dropping to. You know, if this is dropping in, it's probably going to curve in a little bit more here. So make sure that. Um, Make sure all those proportions are really, really, really spot on. Uh, it's part of the curse of putting a face into your piece is that you do have to absolutely nail it and make it perfect. Um, so yeah, um, it's a lot to think about, but uh, uh, yeah, I think it's looking good. Right. I like uh, I like the atmosphere here. Uh, this is getting some good mood going on here. Um, it's certainly off to a good start. Um, there's a few things that I think are feeling off right now. So as soon as you look at the values, how do the values feel? And right now, the the overall sense of this kind of light coming from the back and this these darker trees uh, is working decently well. Uh, you've got some decent depth going on with those background trees. Uh, and overall, the colors, I think, are, are working well. 
Uh, when you start looking closer, though, and you realize that this foreground um, sort of house, church, whatever it's supposed to be, uh, is supposed to be illuminated, then the values sort of don't work as well as I think they should. Um, so if you're going to have some sort of artificial illumination here, um, I want to see this lit up a bit more. Uh, I want to see that obvious feel of um, the values alone showing that this is being illuminated. The other thing I want to see is a bit more reference for your trees, because right now you've you've sort of done the standard thing that I talked about early on in this course of just kind of doing a standard tree and throwing it up against the edge uh, as your compositional uh, device without thinking about, okay, well, what sort of tree is this and how does the form work? You know, how does the tree wrap around in perspective? How can I simplify this um, and make it work for me? So go back to that stage of getting reference and make sure that you're really, really looking at reference for all of this stuff. Uh, same goes for architecture. Uh, if you're going to do anything architectural, uh, you've got to make sure to really good reference uh, for all of it. You know, if you're doing a roof line, uh, the roof line is going to extend past the wall for the most part in just about every building you look at. Uh, and then you think about the perspective. Uh, think about it, you're looking up at this stuff, so you're going to see underneath this roof line uh, a fair bit. Um, and then think about uh, you know what sort of uh, bricks you're working on here, uh, and make sure all of those are lining up to the uh, perspective setup you've got. And lastly, on perspective, make sure that when you're doing all these uh, natural growths, uh, these mushrooms and stuff um, growing on the trees, that those are acting together with perspective too. So the ones above the horizon line, you're actually going to see, for instance, a shadow here because you're going to see the underside of them. And then perhaps the ones uh, that are lower down that you're looking down at, uh, you're actually going to see an illuminated one. Uh, and just think about how even that little indication there of those those mushrooms growing on this tree tell us so much about uh, the depth and the perspective of this scene uh, that you didn't otherwise have in there. Uh, and that's sort of something you have to think about in in literally every every part of your painting. Uh, every part of an environment painting is how do I show off uh, the perspective of this uh, scene? How do I show off the form? How do I show off the light? Uh, what's the best way to tell that uh, to my viewer? Um, so, yeah, uh, a whole lot of things to think about, but um, hopefully they're hopefully they'll give you a few ideas of how to um, uh, how to improve this. But uh, good start. Right, I really like the colors. Um, colors are working really nice. Um, Let's see here. Um, I like how you've opened up this background here. I think this is working super well. Um, and as crazy and out there as as the forms are, I think for the most part they're working pretty well. But there's a few things that I can kind of see. Um, your values work great. Uh, I think your values are spot on. I love that you're doing some foreground stuff here. Uh, I think this has worked very well. I would like to see a little less uh, cutout effect, though. Um, I know it comes partly from the, uh, you know, using the lasso tool and stuff, um, and it works in some places. But in general, having this a hundred percent crisp edge on everything uh, doesn't really match up with the way that the rest of the painting works. Um, so I want to see, I want to see a little bit more going back in there and painting, uh, just because it tends to end up with slightly sloppy edges when you do this stuff. So rather than having this perfect form, uh, you don't really have the full sense of, you know, planes receding away from you. For instance, you don't have that last level of absolute distance. Uh, you have these weird sort of concave forms that are ever so slightly concave uh, when they really should be a little bit convex and they feel a little odd uh, being that concave. So go back in there and try brushing in some more stuff. Uh, go back in and hand paint some stuff. Because where you are, 
hand painting stuff, I think it works a lot better. Um, there's obviously way further for you to go as far as rendering goes. Um, this feels closer to a sketch quality than a finished piece. Uh, you want to be much slower and much more careful, much more um, observant about everything. Uh, for instance, if you really look at it, a lot of your forms don't make sense. Um, you know, the initial glance at it is, okay, yeah, you've got sort of a top, you've got a side, you've got a, a lit underside here, and that's fine. But as soon as you start to think a little bit more about it, you realize, okay, does this top really make much sense? And it kind of doesn't. So why don't I go in there and really figure out, okay, well, I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to really take my time and carefully figure out, okay, well, I realistically not see much of that. Uh, top up there. So I'm going to go in there and really clarify that. And what are these brush strokes really telling us up here? They're not telling us much. They're, they're just sort of sloppy texture. Um, why don't I go in there and really clarify and show, okay, maybe there's you know some cracks along this form. Make them line up with uh, what you're doing to the silhouette. So rather than haphazardly throwing in uh, random brush strokes, go back in there and use the sort of random randomness of the textures to pull out um, and actually finish this rendering here. About when it comes to to really finishing work, it's very very easy to sort of imply that you know what you're doing, but to really show that you do know what you're doing. Uh, it takes much, much longer, um, much longer to be this exact with it. Uh, and I think, especially when you're starting out, uh, is is 100% crucial uh, so that you kind of can later on, if you choose to, uh, go a little bit looser with things uh, and allow a few things to be implied. Um, but I'd say it, uh, at this stage, um, to really, really be careful, really render things. Go back in there and make everything super tight, super precise. Because um, again, if you look at you know this, what is this really telling us? This form doesn't make any sense. Um, in general, it's the right color, it's the right value. You've got the sense of, yes, there's some light values, some dark values, but the actual form, once we get into them, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And it's just... Um, and the brush strokes thrown around to sort of imply things. Um, yeah, just uh, just think about that and how you might be able to use some of that uh, to go about really, really pushing these to a complete finish. Um, yeah, so looking good. Wow. This looks really good. Um, I really like this. There's a lot of really awesome stuff happening here. Um, really nice color palette, uh, strong sense of light, strong sense of perspective in most of it. And, uh, in general, you're kind of getting there. I don't feel like this is finished enough. I feel like you need to keep going with your rendering. Uh, there's a few places that I feel like are getting kind of close ish. Like if you stay painterly, I think what you're doing over here is about as far as you need to go. The thing is, is that there's there's enough areas where it's clear you haven't spent the time that this can't get away with doing that. Um, I often tell people when I do portfolio reviews, and I'm sure I've told you guys this, that you need to render the boring parts uh, just well enough so that no one ever looks at them. Um, as much as this stuff is fun and you love painting this focal point, nobody's ever really going to look up in this top left corner. But the fact that you haven't painted it very much means that people will look at it and it'll drag this down. Uh, it'll be distracting because it's not uh, rendered enough. And same goes for you know some of the other large swaths of this painting. Um, they don't have enough going on in them. They don't have enough consideration and care in them uh, so that we won't look at them. Uh, the lighting is telling us where to look. The lighting is telling us this is super important. So even if you render the hell out of this area over here, we're not going to look here, and that's fine. 
but you need to bring it up to a further level of finish um, to bring it more in line uh, with the rest of the piece so it won't distract us. Um, so I think your focal points could use with a bit more rendering. Um, for instance, you could bring in some more light here uh, and really render this stuff out a bit more than you've got it. And once you've kind of got that established as a certain level of rendering, uh, you can kind of bring the whole rest of the piece up to not a not the same level. It can obviously be more detailed than the focal points. There's nothing wrong with that. But it needs to be rendered enough so that you don't want to look at it, that you're not distracted by looking at it. Yeah, um, I would just say in general, tighten things up a little bit. Um, your perspective in a couple of places here in the foreground feels a little bit weak, uh, but that could just be from not having it uh, clear enough. Uh, I think if you um, take a little extra time to, to render some of this stuff here in the foreground, um, I think you'll be fine because the rest of it feels really solid perspective wise. Uh, and all your previous sketches have had really good perspective. So I think you'll be fine with it. Um, yeah, it's just that uh, they need a little bit of extra time. But again, the colors and the lighting are, are really gorgeous. Uh, and I, I love how they're looking so far. So yeah, really nice work. Right, it's looking good. Um, really like the colors. Uh, clearly some referenced colors, uh, at least referenced off of some of the studies we've done earlier in this class, uh, and that's a good thing. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong whatsoever with stealing color palettes, with referencing color palettes. I think it's a great thing to do. Uh, more people do it than you probably think, uh, and with great success. What I would say for this painting is that it doesn't feel like it has a payoff. Uh, you get a little bit of something here, and I could almost tell, but my monitor is not quite picking it out, but it almost seems like there's a silhouette here. But there's not enough of a payoff here. I want to see a little bit stronger. It can be the exact same thing you've got back here, but I want to see some sort of um, focal point um, this I'm going to look at here. Uh, just on a compositional note, I find it weird when a path sort of hooks off into the corner there. So I want to see this path actually kind of keep leading back to your focal point. Uh, it's not something that's a hard and fast rule. I don't believe in the whole, like, your eye goes off the page and all that nonsense, because it is nonsense. Um, but I do kind of like just psychologically to see this path and to see it kind of going into the painting and see it kind of heading in some direction. Just think it psychologically works a little bit better for me. Um, the rocks right now feel a little bit um, inconsistent. Uh, there's a few things that are a little bit wonky with them. Uh, they don't have enough of a strong sense of form right now, uh, partially because of some of the highlights as well as I think there's too many curves in them. I think they're softening up a little bit too much. Uh, it's very easy to have really soft, uh, rounded out forms. And yes, rocks obviously do get rounded out. Um, but even when you've got that sort of rounding, uh, you need to make sure that there's um, still that three dimensionality to them, which you can either play up by focusing on the light and how that uh, how that affects things. So having some rounding out of your shadows, uh, places where the where the shadows will actually creep in there and show the roundness, uh, and or you accentuate some of the the straight lines of it. So rather than fully showing every single curve, you actually play up any chance you get to have some straight um, 
obvious forms. So anytime you get to put a straight line in there uh, to simplify some curving undulating lines, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, those are sort of ways to play up uh, form over, <clears throat> over everything else. Also, another thing you might want to think about is that if they are on this sort of hillside, you want to make sure they're still sitting uh, into this, uh, which could be um, a lot of it's going to come from how the grass is growing and grass is interacting with them. Uh, those edges are going to tell us a lot about how these things are sitting and not sliding down. Um, even though grass is going to grow on this hillside, it's not going to grow actually necessarily out uh, like this. Uh, it's probably going to try to grow straight up no matter what um, and maybe have a little bit of curve near the top. Because uh, right now, your composition sort of has this feel of slipping off to the side. And so I think it needs a little bit of uh, contrasting angles. Uh, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't quite feel like that. Uh, sort of how I approach a lot of uh, composition is how does this painting make me feel? And right now, it, it sort of felt like it was sliding too much. And so my sort of instinct is to, to put some things in there that are counteracting that, uh, that are going against uh, that sort of form. And also go for perhaps a little bit more mid-ground, because right now you've sort of got foreground and then some background. Uh, so maybe a little bit more mid-ground to show some extra depth uh, as this goes back in there. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's about it on that one. Um, I like the lighting and color and mood you've got going on. So I think you're, uh, you're going in the right direction there. So keep it up. All right. So really nice sense of lighting and color. Uh, I think this works fantastically. Uh, yeah, really nice. But right now, there's a couple things. Uh, obviously, the rendering is not finished by any means, but I think you realize that. The other thing I want to talk about is that the perspective doesn't work quite right. There's a few areas where it's it's not reading quite right. So if this is, you know, all the way down at the beachfront, it doesn't doesn't feel quite right. Uh, it doesn't make sense that the snow would be all the way down there. These feel like mountain peaks. They're going all the way straight down to this. Uh, the scale doesn't feel quite right, uh, nor do the curves feel quite right. So think about uh, if you've got this curve in perspective. You're doing it here where you know the close end of this curve is covered up for us, but you're not fully doing it here. Um, you've sort of got this even C curve uh, when in fact it should it should really show us mostly the distant part and then have um, less of this of this foreground stuff. Um, same goes for sort of the scale of this. Uh, I'm not really getting a strong sense of scale. And that can partially come from uh, it not being rendered enough yet that I can't tell what things are. You know, right now, this could be a tree or it could be a shrub. And we need sort of those things to tie on to when we've got fantasy elements in a piece so that we can tell what's happening. When we, when we get the scale of the detail, uh, we have an easier time uh, sort of identifying uh, what things are and how large they are and um, how uh, how we can sort of fit into that environment. Um, so yeah, I think overall it's working nicely. I think it's a good start. Um, there's some definitely some stray values when I start to look at this in grayscale that I want to kind of darken down and simplify some of this stuff just to make the perspective uh, or rather the composition work a little bit better. Um, right now, if you're going to have these uh, blocks, I'd like to see some more of what this is, uh, whether that's uh, actually bringing in more of the structure into our scene, as in expanding the whole composition out so that we actually can see more of this structure, or even uh, almost better yet, 
having some other structures um, receding towards the background that we can clearly identify. So if you're going to have some structures, go ahead and show us um, some more architecture down here. Let us see some buildings. Let us see some terraces, uh, some rooftops, whatever it is that uh, this sort of structure turns into. Uh, let's see some similar ones kind of receding towards that background. So that we can uh, we can buy it because once we see some back here that are you know we can see this whole building or most of it, then we don't mind seeing a little snippet of something here. In fact, that adds a lot of interest to things. Um, so something to think about there. Also, be careful about seeing too much of the tops of things. So again, your horizon lines here. You're looking up at all these blocks, which means that you're not going to actually see too much in between them. Um, between the top and the bottom of the next one. Those are going to be relatively tight together. Um, even if they do have, for instance, snow or something piled on top of them, it's only going to be a fairly thin line because you are looking up at that edge. Um, if you were looking down at it, sure, you'd probably see some more into there. Uh, but you're not going to see too much when you're looking up at this stuff that's resting uh, on the top of blocks. Think about that too. Um, you keep going with this. Overall, I do like where this is. Uh, this has started. I think this is this is looking good so far. Uh, but I do want to see it uh, push to a uh, a fully complete finish. So yeah, and good. And that's it for us. Um, so that's everybody. Uh, so overall, looking really good. Um, as expected, uh, values and perspective are two of the big things. Um, Yeah, uh, obviously it takes a lot of rendering, and I know this stuff does take a lot of time, but uh, I try my best to push you guys when uh, when you need it. But overall, you're looking good, uh, and you're heading in the right direction, and you've got some really good starts here. So, yeah. So this coming uh, week, or other two weeks, uh, we will be continuing to do some finished painting. Uh, I prefer if you guys start actually a new painting, and take that to finish rather than finishing one of these. Uh, for the people who had who didn't really get a chance to render their piece at all, um, you're welcome to take one of those and take it to finish. Uh, I think they're perfectly fine starts. And if you haven't had the chance of really pushing something to finish, uh, I'd recommend doing that now. But for the people who have sort of gotten the piece to 80%, say, uh, I'd suggest you start a new one and take that to finish uh, instead. I think you'll uh, I think you'll learn a little bit more and have a little bit more to benefit by doing that. Um, so uh, looking good. Uh, we're going to be doing another critique in uh, two weeks. Uh, so two weeks from today, uh, we'll do another one. Uh, I'd like to see another finished painting. Um, obviously, the the course itself goes over uh, photo bashing and using photo elements. Uh, you do not have to do that if you do not want to. Uh, you are more than welcome to. Uh, there are certain technicalities with doing that, and I'll go into that in the uh, critique. Um, but you certainly don't have to. You can keep doing more painterly stuff like you've been doing. Uh, you can even bring in 3D right now if you want to. Uh, whatever you're interested in working on, uh, I'm fine with that. So they're all they're all valid techniques. So I think that that about wraps us up for today. So thanks again for everything. Uh, you guys are doing great, and uh, I can't wait to see what you come up with uh, in a couple of weeks. So good luck.